generative AI is taking over the dialogue and it's moving at a pace that none of us have ever seen in the technology industry. I think we'd all agree. The number of companies releasing product and the compounding effect of this technology is phenomenal. I think we would all agree. A product came out this week called Auto GPT, and uh, people are losing their mind over it. Basically, what this does is it lets different GPTs talk to each other. And so you can have agents working in the background, and we've talked about this on previous podcasts, but they could be talking to each other essentially and then completing tasks without much intervention. So if let's say you had a sales team and you said to the sales team, hey, look for leads that have these characteristics for our sales software, put them into our database, find out if they're already in the database, alert a salesperson to it, compose a message based on that person's profile on LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever, and then compose an email, send it to them. If they reply, offer them to do a demo and then put that demo on the calendar of the salesperson thus eliminating a bunch of jobs and you could run these what would essentially be cron jobs in the background forever and they could interact with other llms in real time sax i just gave but one example here but when you see this happening give us your perspective on what this tipping point means let me take a shot at explaining it in a slightly different way sure not that your explanation was wrong but i just think that maybe explain it in terms of something more tangible sure so i, I had a friend who's a developer who's been playing with auto GPT, by the way, so you can see it's on GitHub. It's kind of an open source project. It was sort of a hobby project. It looks like that somebody put up there. It's been out for about two weeks. It's already got 45,000 stars on GitHub, which is a huge number. Explain what GitHub is for the audience. Thank you. It's just a code repository and you can create, you know, repos of code for open source projects. That's where all the developers check in their code. So, you know, for open source projects like this, anyone can go see it and play with it. It's like Pornhub, but for developers. <laughs> it would be more like amateur <laughs> Pornhub because you're contributing your scenes, as it were, your code. Yeah. But yes, continue. But in any event, this thing has a ton of, of stars. And apparently just last night, I got another 10,000 stars overnight. This thing is like exploding in terms of popularity. But in any event, what you do is you give it an assignment. And what... Auto GPT can do that's different is it can string together prompts. So if you go to Chat GPT, you prompt it one at a time. And what the human does is you get your answer and then you think of your next prompt and then you kind of go from there and you end up in a long conversation that gets you to where you want to go. So the question is what if the AI could basically prompt itself? Then you've got the basis for autonomy. And that's what this project is designed to do. So what you'll do is what my friend did is he said, okay, you're an event planner AI, and what I would like you to do is plan a trip for me for a wine tasting in Healdsburg this weekend. And I want you to find like the best place I should go, and it's got to be kid-friendly. Not everyone's going to drink. We're going to have kids there, and I'd like to be able to have other people there. And so I'd like you to plan this for me. And so what AutoGPT did is it broke that down into a task list. And every time it completed a task, it would add a new task to the bottom of that list. And so the output of this is that it searched a bunch of different wine tasting venues. It found a venue that had a bocce ball and lawn area for kids. It came up with a schedule. It created a budget. It created a checklist for an event planner. It did all these things. And my friend says he's actually going to book the venue this weekend and use it. So we're going beyond the ability just for a human to just prompt the AI, where now the AI can take on complicated tasks. And again, it can recursively update its task list based on what it learns from its own previous prompt. So what you're seeing now is the basis for a personal digital assistant. This is really where it's all headed, is that you can just tell the AI to do something for you pretty complicated, and it will be able to do it. It will be able to create its own task list and get the job done and quite complicated jobs. So that's why everyone's losing their shit over this. Freeberg, your thoughts on automating these tasks and having them run and, and add tasks to the list. This does seem like a sort of seminal moment in time that this is actually working. I think we've been seeing seminal moments over the last couple of weeks and months, kind of continuously. Every time we chat about stuff or every day there's new releases that are paradigm shifting 
and kind of reveal new applications and, and perhaps concepts structurally that we didn't really have a good grasp of before some demonstration came across. ChatGPT was kind of the, the seed of that. And then all of this evolution since has really, I think, changed the landscape for really how we think about our interaction with the digital world and where the digital world can go and how it can interact with the physical world. It's, it's just really profound. One of the interesting aspects that I think I saw with some of the applications of AutoGPT were these almost like autonomous characters in, in like a game simulation that could interact with each other or these autonomous characters that would speak back and forth to one another where each instance has its own kind of predefined role and then it explores some set of discovery or application or prompt back and forth with the other agent. And that the kind of recursive outcomes with this agent to agent interaction model and perhaps multi-agent interaction model, again, reveals an entirely new paradigm for, you know, how things can be done simulation wise, you know, discovery wise, engagement wise, where one agent, you know, each agent can be a different character in a room. And you can almost see how a team might resolve to create a new product collaboratively by telling each of those agents to have a different character background or different set of data or a different set of experiences or different set of personality traits. And the evolution of those, that multi-agent system outputs you know, something that's very novel that perhaps any of the agents operating independently were not able to kind of reveal themselves. So again, like another kind of dimension of interaction with these, with these models. And it, uh, it, again, like every week, it's a whole nother layer to the onion. It's super exciting and compelling. And the, the rate of change and the, the pace of kind of, you know, new paths being, being defined here really, I think, makes it difficult to catch up. And particularly, it highlights why it's going to be so difficult, I think, for regulators to come in and try and set a set of standards and a set of rules at this stage, because we don't even know what we have here yet. Mm. And it's, it's going to be very hard to kind of put the genie back in the box. Yeah. And, and you're also referring, I think, to the Stanford and Google paper that was published this week. They did a research paper where they created essentially the Sims, if you remember that video game, put a bunch of eh, what you might consider NPCs, non-playable characters, you know, the merchant or the whoever in a, um, in a video game. And they said, each of these agents should talk to each other, put them in a simulation, one of them decided to have a birthday party, they decided to invite other people. And then they have memories. And so then over time, they would generate responses like I can't go to your birthday party, but happy birthday. And then they would follow up with each player and seemingly emergent behaviors came out of this sort of simulation, which of course, now has everybody thinking, well, of course, we as humans, and this is simulation theory are living in a simulation, we've all just been put into this. 